Hi guys, and how are you doing? It's me here, Tabi. Uh, I am glad to be joining you on this platform and I hope that you're being blessed. Come on, there is so much content for you to keep your faith up and not give up. Today, I want to speak to you on an interesting topic. What do you do when you don't live up to your intentions? You know, as Christians, we have this desire to please our Lord, to do everything that the Lord calls us to do. But the reality on the ground is we don't always live up to that intention. In fact, it is Paul who said, the thing I want to do, I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. And most of the time, that's the reality on the ground. We have all the good intentions to please our Lord, to follow him. Um, I was reading the story of Peter, how he tells Jesus in Matthew, uh, in Matthew chapter 26, uh, he tells Christ that, you know, Jesus, I am your guy. <laughs> in fact, I want to read for you. He says, I'm your guy. I will follow you to your death, even if it means uh, my death. It says in verse 26 of 35, chapter 26, verse 35, Peter says, uh, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Now, this is just before the crucifixion. And you know the story of Peter. Not very many days after that, Peter denies Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. He denies and says, you know what? Me, I do not know this guy. I have never even seen him. I, what are you talking about? And he right there in the presence of Jesus, he denied him. Now, the question is, did Jesus know that Peter was going to deny him after three days? Even when Peter is making this confession to him that, Father, that Lord, me minute, I will be with you. Sorry, I was speaking in Swahili there. I will be with you until death. Even if it means die, I will not deny you. How many times do you promise to do things for God and then you don't do it? The other day I was talking to somebody who was telling me, you know, I have this desire to, to be reading my Bible every morning, to have... Um, to have a devotional life and had said I'm going to complete the book of Matthew uh, within Sijui how many days and they were feeling so condemned they were feeling like they had not lived up to their intentions that's the case sometimes we don't live up to those intentions but what do we do when that happens I'm encouraged by the story of the prodigal son because when he departed from his father's house and he went and he did things and he came to that place where he was like very low you know what made the prodigal son to come back to his senses the scripture says that he thought about his father and here is the thing our ability to remain in faith is not based upon our love for god that's not even it what keeps us in faith it is god loves it is god love for us and if you're listening to me, you are that person who has not lived up to your intentions and you're feeling condemned like Peter. In fact, the Bible says when he denied Jesus, he went back fishing because now he was feeling unworthy of God's love. He was feeling like he had failed Jesus and he went back fishing. And many of us do that. When we feel like we have failed our Lord, sometimes we will even depart from the presence of God. Sometimes we live and leave church. Sometimes we will say, oh, this salvation thing is not mine and we depart. But I want to give you a secret. The thing that helps you to remain in faith, the Bible says it is the goodness of God that turns people to repentance. Just like the prodigal son, when you think about your Lord, when you think about God and how much he loves you, that he actually laid his life on the cross, not because you were good, not because you had done what uh, it takes, not because you had lived up to that expectation, but because he loved you still. When you think about the goodness of God, may it help you come back to God and say, okay, I didn't live up to this intention, didn't live up to this expectation, but I can do better. I can do better by the grace of God. And you come back to him and you allow yourself to be restored back to faith. Don't depart from him. Don't run away. Don't consider yourself unworthy of his love, but remain steadfast, looking at his goodness, looking at his love and finding the strength to keep coming back no matter how many times you have messed up. And listen, God is not surprised that you have messed up. He already knows what is going to happen tomorrow. What he wants you to do is to be faithful. It is to be 
uh, it is to consider how much he loves you. Many times you mess up, you come back because his love never, ever fails. God bless you and I'm praying for you that indeed you will be restored from the place that you have fallen. God bless you.